chapter 13, we are going to continue to talk about forces, uh, continuing where we left off in chapter 12. If you remember in chapter 12, though, what were we talking about? We were talking about forces on which phase of matter for the most part. We were talking about forces on solids. Now we're going to talk about forces on fluids. So what the heck is a force on a fluid and what is a fluid? So let's talk about fluids. A fluid is a substance that assumes the shape of its container and the two examples are gases and liquids. Pretty much a great example excuse me, a great example of a fluid is anything that flows. Is air a fluid? I'll think about it. Can air flow? Absolutely air can flow, so therefore by default air is a fluid. So think about that. Usually all solids, excuse me, all gases and liquids are fluids. Solids are not. When we talk about water pressure or pressure in fluids, water pressure increases as the depth increases. Why? Think about the weight. How much weight do you have on top of you if you keep going deeper into the ocean? You have more water on top of you. The same thing applies to us if we are talking about air. What happens if you go higher in the atmosphere? You have less air on top of you, so there's less pressure higher in the atmosphere than there is on the ground. So water pressure increases as the depth increases just because you have more weight beneath you. Now, we've talked about pressure before. A couple of things we have to highlight with pressure is the units for pressure. Now, when we talked about pressure before, we only really focused on one unit. And I think the one unit we focused on was atmospheres. Pressure can come in another unit called Pascals, it can also come in another unit called Tor, and it also can come in another unit called Millimeters of Mercury. All four of these are acceptable units for pressure. What you're going to see is our answers are going to deal in atmospheres or Pascals. Now when we are dealing with chemistry, most of our answers were in atmospheres. When we deal with the physics side of things, we're going to prefer to use Pascals. At sea level, at sea level, the pressure that occurs at us at sea level, all right, at sea level, the pressure is one atmosphere or 101,300 Pascals. So at sea level, we have one atmosphere weighing down on us, which makes complete sense. If you're on the ground, the entire atmosphere is weighing on you, so you have one atmosphere. If you go up, you're going to have less atmosphere. If you go down, you're going to have more atmosphere on you. So something to think about when we have air pressure. Multiple units for pressure. How do we get our units for pressure? We talked about pressure, volume, and temperature, how they are related. We're going to actually talk about what is pressure here. So pressure is force over an area. Force over an area. To calculate pressure, divide the force by the area. So if we're going to get an equation, our equation for pressure is force divided by area. Now we talked about area way back at the beginning of the school year. Our default unit for measuring distance and length is meters. Area is in meters squared. Remember from chapter 12, our unit for pressure, or excuse me, our unit for force is newtons. If we're going to circle this up, pressure is equal to force divided by area. Now, when we use this equation, pressure, the units for pressure, is Pascals, or PA. So, pressure is equal to force divided by area. The higher the pressure, the greater the force. The more area, the less the force. And we're going to talk about practical applications where you see pressure, uh, force, and area all intertwine with one another. So we will talk about that. 
Now, last thing I want to do. Whoop. Last thing I want to do in 13.1 is I want to go over an example of pressure. So let's go ahead and talk about an example of pressure. So let's say Mr. Clenert is walking on a bed of nails. Which I will do in class for you. Alright, Mr. Clenert is walking on a bed of nails. My force is my weight. All right. My force is approximately 980 newtons. And the area of my feet, the area of my feet Is now I have big feet. I have size 15 feet. So we're gonna. This is a little bigger than the average person, but we're gonna go. Oh, I. If we eyeballed it, we got to do it in centimeters, which makes things even trickier. Is 0.06 meters. 0.06 meters squared. What is the force on my feet? Excuse me. What is the pressure? What is the pressure on my feet? Now, when you guys do these problems, I've seen you guys start to do them. What you have to focus on is you have to work on isolating out what's given to you. So we have two major things given to us. We have force and we have area. What's key is that's right that what we have. We have force. 980 newtons. We have area, 0 0.06 meters squared. And what are we trying to solve for? Pressure. Anytime you do a problem, guys, it's really beneficial for you to sit down and write these down to figure out what you have because the equations are going to become, uh, going to get more complicated. Next. We're going to use the circle from the last slide, and we're going to solve for pressure. Well, pressure is equal to force divided by area. That's equal to 980 divided by 0 0.06. When you take 980 and you divide by 0 0.06, your answer using sig figs is going to be 1 is 20,000. Now, what's our answer or what's our unit for pressure? Our unit for pressure when we use this equation is always pascals. And our final answer is 20,000 pascals. So remember, when we're talking about pressure, pressure is equal to force divided by area. It's the force over an area. A fluid is anything that flows. And lastly, when you go up in the atmosphere, the pressure decreases. When you go under the water, the pressure increases. That's the end of section 13.1.